Hi, this is Charles Hoskinson broadcasting live from Kihei, Hawaii. Not quite my hometown. I grew up a little bit east of here in Makawa. But uh, while on my workation, I wanted to update everybody on a few th little things. Um, we successfully launched the uh, KEVM testnet as well as Cardano 1.2. Uh, these have been uh, greatly successful. I, uh, I know that they're being well adopted because we're getting lots of bug reports coming in, which is always a really, really good sign. Uh, anyway, uh, we're getting ready now for the next major testnet update, which is going to be the Yella update. So uh, after here in Hawaii, I'm actually going to be flying out to University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, and actually some of my people are already there uh, alongside the runtime verification people to discuss some last-minute details about the Yella testnet launch. We launched the KEVM testnet first because structurally speaking, it's very similar to what we're planning on launching for Yella. So we wanted to make sure that we had kind of a nice basis for comparison and that we got some of the kinks out before we started the uh, Yella specific test. Uh, so my hope is to get that testnet out sometime in July, if possible, hopefully earlier, but uh, July looks like it's um, the target window for it. So I'll be meeting up with Lars, Gerard, Tristan, uh, Gregory Roshu and many others in uh, Illinois and Urbana-Champaign to discuss these last-minute details about getting that testnet out. Now, Yellow ships with its own programming language. It kind of looks like LLVM assembly. It's uh, pretty nifty. If you've ever programmed in C, you'll probably feel at home. Uh, and we also will be shipping it with a Solidity to Yellow compiler. And so basically, you'll be able to take a Solidity program and either compile it to the KEVM or compile it to Yella, or compile it to both, and uh, A-B test your applications. So that's coming soon. I look forward to launching that. I just wanted to let you guys know that that's on the horizon. Uh, after University of Illinois, I'm going to be flying out to Scotland, to Edinburgh, uh, to begin a series of conversations with our scientists about Orbor's Hydra, and a series of conversations about linking Cardano SL and Cardano CL together. Uh, if you look at the development roadmaps, what's happening is that uh, Cardano CL is just now starting to get out into the actual testing phase and people are starting to use it. Uh, and the good news is that model is uh, rapidly evolving. So uh, that's something that's probably at the end of the day not going to be development uh, restricted in terms of when it's released. Rather, it's going to be waiting for integration with Cardano SL. And to accommodate that, we need to make some changes to the way Ouroboros works to merge stakes so you can maintain multiple blockchains at the same time with the same algorithm. Uh, we have a pretty good idea how to do that. It's just we have to write the code for that. The other thing is you have to be able to move ADA from SL to CL. So we also have a really good idea of how to do that, what the proofs look like. Uh, but we need to now start a series of discussions of how we're going to go from the laboratory to actual production. Uh, so that's uh, that's uh, going to be a very long, laborious series of conversations, and I'll be in Scotland for about two weeks, uh, hopefully also do a community event while I'm there, uh, specifically to discuss these types of things, amongst other things. Uh, some other updates, uh, Cardano 1.3 and Cardano 1.4. For Cardano 1.3, uh, our development cutoff will probably occur sometime mid-June, probably June 14th to June 15th, which means then it goes into the QA cycle, similar to how the cutoff for uh, features for Cardano 1.2 was in April, and then we released it in late May. Uh, it anticipates something very similar to that uh, upcoming. So 1.3 1.4 are all about improvements to the network stack, and they're all about improvements to... Uh, the uh, the underlying reliability of the wallet code. So you may have noticed the formal specification that we wrote for Cardano SL's wallet. We've been actually implementing that. So we have two parallel teams. One is working on a cock verification of that, and uh, they've made great success. The other team is working on systematically implementing it, uh, and uh, they've also had great success. So we anticipate that that implementation will work its way probably into Cardano 1.4, uh, and uh, a lot of network improvements are going to come in in Cardano 1.3 and Cardano 1.4. In the lab, we've been showing about a 400% improvement in, in terms of download speeds and a lot of reliability enhancements to the network stack. So people who have connecting the network issues, uh, 1.3 and 1.4 should definitely help you guys out.
The other thing is once uh, we have the new wallet backend installed into uh, Cardano's code base, uh, we think this thing is really going to scale well and work really, really well on enterprise deployments and well on exchange deployments. So for power users who have tens of thousands of addresses that they're maintaining and lots of transactions in and out, like an exchange like Binance or Bittrex, uh, definitely going to help you guys tremendously. Um, there's still a lot to do. We're right now in the process of specking and rewriting core to improve it and get it ready for Ouroboros Prowse. We're also in the process of specking out some improvements to our network stack and, and uh, specking out some improvements to the data layer of Cardano. Now, you may have noticed that when you install Daedalus, it takes a lot of space and there's lots of files. Um, this was due to some poor design choices uh, that a contractor that we worked with made uh, and we've been focusing on higher priority things to correct, but that is something that we'd like to correct. Uh, Cardano's blockchain isn't 8 gigabytes. It's actually just a few hundred megabytes. So it would be nice to actually have that properly reflected in the, uh, in the installation size and data size. And we'll get there. Um, so uh, these are just some minor updates. Yella is coming. I'll be in Illinois, and I'll do an update there uh, with the uh, RV team uh, and our project manager, uh, Gerard. Also, we'll probably do something joint with Ralph Johnson, who's the project manager on the RV side, the Ralph Johnson from Design uh, Patterns, if you're a Java fan. Uh, and then uh, in Scotland, we'll also have a little bit of a discussion about uh, sidechains and merge staking and so forth. So um, a lot of stuff is coming. Uh, we're working real hard on things. Uh, you know, we're getting more listings coming. Uh, a lot of people are really excited that they actually can write uh, smart contracts in the uh, Cardano paradigm. Uh, I really, really hope that we can do a Plutus update because that's the other side of our uh, smart contract paradigm. And that involves extending the UTXO model and uh, doing a bunch of little things with UTXO style smart contracts. And that's a distinctly different model than the way a person would write an Ethereum style smart contract. So that's something completely new and I think it's a big innovation that we can bring to the cryptocurrency space that a lot of people have been discussing for years in the space and it'd be good to see it in a production system. So uh, this is my brief Hawaii update. Uh, thank you so much for listening and uh, mahalo.